Okay, I want to show two quick things that I did for my first Rotoscope adventure game in GDevelop 5. Um, that's having an idle fidget or having a random pose displayed every couple seconds when you're not moving the character. And the second thing is um, how to handle timed animation switches. Like if somebody goes into a door and it plays a second animation of him rotating or picking up an item, what to do once it hits the last frame of that animation. I couldn't find in GDevelop 5 an event to listen for last played frame, um, so I did it with timers. So I'll show you how to do those real quick. Um, in my sprite right here, I have all my animations or frames set up here from 0 to 4. It's just the idle states. So we're going to use a random number generator to reference these numbers and change those. And animation four is my 17 frame walk cycle. And animation five is actually him rotating into the door. And this is when I wanted to use the event to tell me when the last frame was played, but there wasn't any. So instead, we're gonna use a timer. So also, I added a global variable under scene settings, global variables, called walk speed that we can use to toggle off based on the keys we press. So over here, um, this is how I have it set up. I use the at beginning of scene, I activate full screen, and I instantiated two timers that'll instantiate and start running immediately. One's called idle, be idle behavior, and one is called turn in. And then this, since there is no condition, this is going to be running at 20 frames a second. It's going to be changing the X position of our sprite based on the value of walk speed and just a text update to tell us what frame is currently displayed, just for debug. Um, for the idle behavior, I'm actually looking at the value as idle behavior ticks up. This condition, if it's greater than two and a half seconds, reset it to zero. So it, it's in this two and a half second loop. And also every time it fires off, every two and a half seconds, I change the number of the animation of the guy to the random value using a random number generator. And you can do that easily by selecting guy and we're gonna set its animation to, we're gonna set it to an, a value. And you just type in random and there it is. Now, the random number is gonna set between zero and four. So we're actually gonna select a range of four values, starting at zero. Actually, that last one looks terrible. I'm just gonna use the first three. Okay, and that's how you do that. So you kill that frame. And then once the A key is pressed, that's when we want the guy to move to the left. And that's trigger once, so it doesn't fire all these conditionals off over and over again. So we're gonna set the walk speed to minus four, which is gonna advance the guy to the left, minus four pixels every walk cycle. And we're gonna set the animation to four, which was the value of our walking animation. And it's not turning in, so I'm gonna reset this to make sure the turn in timer is paused and reset to zero and we're gonna pause the idle behavior, which is this guy, it makes him fidget. And he's just gonna move to the left. And once the A key is released, we're gonna set the walk speed to halt at zero, and we're gonna just reset its animation to the first one, and then we're gonna fire off the idle behavior to let the random thing fire off again. Now, if the guy collides with the door, we want the animation number five, or turn in to start. We want to set its walk speed to zero, and we're gonna unpause the turn in timer that we set. Now, how do, how do I know how long it takes that guy to finish its turn in animation? I kind of guessed, and it was off, so I kept making it greater and smaller, so I ended up with three quarters of a second. So, I have a sub condition here, that since we unpause this timer, it starts at zero here, and it's counting 
up until it gets to three quarters of a second. And once that's done, I change the position. I throw him off stage. Actually, let's go ahead and make it a thousand so we know where he is. We just jar him over to the right and then we're gonna make him random again since we're right waiting. And then we're gonna reset the turn in timer to be zero. But his walk speed is still zero. And then escape to quit the game. And that looks like this. And that's basically it. So I'm still finding all these pieces so I can build out the whole game. If you're interested in seeing how this game progresses, I'm going to get into logic and building out a whole world with dialogue. If you're interested, go ahead and um, like and subscribe, and I will do my next one as soon as I can. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.